video, we're going to go over one point in your perspective. Um, review some of the vocabulary, and um, we'll start with an exterior or outside view, and end with an interior or an inside view. Um, so here I got my picture playing. There's the horizon line. It could be in the center of your picture plane. It could be towards the top. Um, it could be towards the bottom. So I guess the picture plane, that's where the sky meets the ground. Um, so I guess for this case, I just put the um, horizon line right in the center. Um, the next thing you have is your vanishing point. So it could be off to the right. It could be in the center, it could be to the left. So um, in this case, we'll just we'll drop it right in the center. Um, and then the other thing we have are the orthogonal lines. So we got like a street that's vanishing off into the distance. So these lines here are your orthogonals. So um, I'll label each of the pieces so we can just see how each word's spelled. So we got our... There's our vanishing point. There is our horizon line. There are are orthogonals. So those are the, those diagonal lines that converge at the vanishing point. There's our picture plane. There's the horizon line. Um, I guess the vanishing point right here. And um, yeah, I'll start by drawing an object. So this is one point perspective. Those are my vanishing points. That's all we need. So I got um, just the side of a building, and with one point view in your perspective, you have um, just the side of a building, a blocky object, or just facing directly. So you have the bottom, the top, so they're going to be parallel with your picture plane. So you got horizontal lines, top and bottom. Um, and then you also have the left edge, the right edge, or perfect that are parallel at the edge of your picture plane. Um, so this is true for one point perspective. You have perfectly horizontal, perfectly vertical lines. So now for the sides of the objects, that's where you'll see those orthogonals. So on the bottom line here, I'm going to draw perfect vertical for where that edge is going to stop. And there are our orthogonals for the building. Um, so I guess you notice we have this line and this line. These two orthogonals are getting smaller and smaller. And if they were to continue, they'd stop at that vanishing point and they could go for a, um, almost looks like an arrow. So the, there's these radiating lines, and that implies depth. Um, and so I guess I'm, we'll bring the roof of this building down a little bit. We're going to do a little, kind of we're going to just blow up the top of the building here. So that orthogonal, see how it's not as, So the closer we get to the horizon, the more kind of flat or wide the thing is going to be. And if our, this building were to be just directly at our eye level, so it looks a little funny, but in theory, we just have a straight line at the top of that building. 
that will bring the um, top of the building below eye level. This is where it gets a little more um, inventive, or you have to be more inventive. So the front of the building, if there's no plants, that is going to be horizontal. Always look out for that. Um, so, okay, so now how do we build a top? It looks sort of like this kind of empty shoe box right now. Um, so what we do, so we'll grab this corner that's to the far left, make a dotted line, so there's our orthogonal. You'll see how it's like really pinched in. Um, and then, so I guess um, to imagine where the back building's going to be. You can draw a dotted line. Um, kind of imagine that you're looking at an ice cube. Okay, so we see this kind of side of the box um, to that side. So it, you know, looks like they're, you know, it's not too skewed. And then we'll connect these two corners. Um, kind of stretched out rhombus shape. So that's foreshortening. So when upper portion is kind of projecting out towards you or receding in space, really strange things happen to shape. So we might know, okay, like every side of this rectangular form of this box is going to, you know, have 90 degree angles. But when you think of linear perspective and how things get skewed and foreshortened, um, you'll get these really wacky angles. Um, in really strange shapes. So it's pretty, it's a beautiful thing that that you might not even, you know, kind of come up on your own um, when you're working with linear perspective. And I guess I'm, yeah, for the bottom of the object, so if this were to be a little bit higher up in the picture plane, we'll draw an orthogonal. to the horizon line, your angle becomes wider and wider. Um, but um, yeah, I guess we'll um, make this building large again. And you can even, if like, um, we'll get a building to the opposite side. Our vanishing point. So the same rules apply. Okay, I guess this will converge um, at the vanishing point. Um, and I guess some um, yellow. As far as any sort of detail, so maybe you're looking around in Atlanta, there's a lot of windows on the building you're looking at. Um, you have to think about some interlinear perspective. So, um, as things get further and further away, the smaller they get. that the lines are pretty wide here and see how they almost become flat because they're getting so close together um, as they kind of um, compress as they get further away from us. Um, so think about like when you are drawing side even in space, make any sort of vertical lines, put them closer together. Um, any sort of horizontal lines, don't want to do so we have this really nice kind of shape that's obeying linear perspective but then I'm going to add all these horizontal lines um, so at the base this doesn't quite look right because all the lines What we want to do is create those radiating sort of lines. So 
So above the horizon line, the diagonal distance at the left and the lower right, below the horizon line, it goes from the lower left to the upper right. And it'll be the same for this building. And then, um, so it's really complicated going from the like the side detail kind of buildings. But as far as one point view perspective, um, you can just draw like a symmetrical kind of curve if you have that in mind. Because it's almost that you're just kind of looking at like the flat face of a um, of a building. Perfectly horizontal lines. Oops. Trying to get perfect vertical lines, but they're all if this isn't like receding or in space, it's just um, everything's the same width and height. So notice how those lines are radiating. And right at the horizon line, it's just kind of like a straight line. These lines are also radiating. And these vertical marks or lines in the grid, the space between them gets narrower and narrower the further away we are. I'll start drawing the interior space from one point perspective. So there's our picture plane. Fix this up a little bit. Okay. We'll um, draw our horizon line. And so I guess the first thing we're going to do is get our vanishing point, and then we'll draw kind of the back wall of our room, our hallway. So there's the back wall. We'll get the corners of the ceiling, the wall, the floor, find those orthogonal lines. So um, we got our walls, these orthogonals called dashing shapes, you know they're imaginary. Okay. Um, so I guess the next step is um, we'll put in some windows and some aperture. Um, so I guess I'm similar to the, like the grid we were drawing on the back of the building. We'll um, add our window and also use those orthogonals. So, um, in this room, a really big window. Um, in the edges of the window, make sure the vertical lines are perfectly vertical. If you know, have like a weird triangular shaped window, that's when you use diagonals, but we're not doing that right now. Our window. Um, we'll use those radiating orthogonals to find the sides of our window. Okay. And there's another window in the room. So I'm going to do another. If 
it's not gonna look right. Um, it almost looks like it's kind of like flapping away from the wall. It's not like plastered on there as it should be. So I'll erase that. You want to make sure that those are more horizontally oriented. The edges of your window are orthogonals and converge at the vanishing point. Um, we'll get some other details. Um, so maybe this window is kind of inset. So um, we're looking at it from below eye level. So we're going to see the top part of the window. This is where we kind of had some of the weird mouse hole window. That's when we'd see whatever was at the bottom. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll make the drawing to help. That makes sense. Um, there's one orthogonal. The vertical line, so it's going to be perfectly vertical. And then the horizontal line will make sure it doesn't look perfectly straight. And then we got kind of this inset window. So the only line following the orthogonal is um, this area kind of describing the top edge. If this was like kind of like a strange window that was below eye level, the horizontal line. So we'd find our other orthogonal. So there's one window. We're looking at it from below. So we see the top ledge. Um, in this window, we're looking at it from above. So we see the bottom ledge. Alright, so um, yeah, I guess I'll add like a, just some kind of paint to the window. Um, so I guess we know if we're like looking. Typically, you're going to have a perfect square, so the left side is going to be the same width as the right, and, um, but that might not be the case when we're looking at something in perspective. So here, the right side of the window are closer to us than the left side, so we're going to allow that one window pane to be slightly larger. Kind of projecting um, into the foreground and then so this is a straight up horizontal line when we're looking at the window directly but if a window is kind of plastered against the wall that's receding and following the orthogonals of linear perspective we want to do that with the kind of middle bar in our window as well there's one So, um, yeah, there's some tips on um, drawing a window. And I guess I'll be asked if there's any sort of like scoreboards or checker pattern, tiles. Um, you can use linear perspective to run to those as well. Alright. So I'm thinking these are starting to get a little confusing, so I'm gonna, I guess we'll have the vanishing point there. Kind of remove some of those guidelines. So there's a view of our room. Um, and if the boards, if they're like staggered, you see the ends of them. Each one of those lines is going to be perfectly horizontal in one point perspective. You also got to think about boards will be sort of smaller, shorter in the foreground, longer, or I'm sorry, they're going to be shorter in the background, longer, wider in the um, foreground. So 
they might feel weird, but just let those lines be horizontal as, as ever. short and we'll make them longer. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of how you can render it at full day and um, one point linear perspective. Um, if there were any sort of um, replacements, um, they'd also open these areas as diagonals. So we'll have a two vertical line. There's our poster on the wall. And anything on the back wall, um, so if you were to have like a window in the back, And so it wouldn't really um, be skewed because it's not on the wall that's project projecting towards us, it's just facing us. So we'll have just a perfect rectangle. Um, so whatever posters, windows, patterns on the back wall, just draw them like you would if they were laying flat. Um, we'll add a bed. So I guess we could start with just the foot of the bed. It's gonna be going to be a perfect rectangle. The horizontal edge, the vertical edge will be parallel to the ceiling. And then you use those orthogonals. I'm going to have an orthogonal there, orthogonal here. let the bed just sort of edge what it's going to be on the floor so we know it's raised up a little bit. To double check, imagine the bed's an ice cube and it's transparent so there's the back rectangle, there's the front or the foot of the bed. Um, this is smaller because it's further away so we have that diminishing scale. Make sure those corners connect and they do. Um, so that there's a, a bed. You can add your details on there. So we work like a blanket. You can add some pillows. Maybe they're propped up against the wall so you don't have to be as rigid with your pillows. Um, add some feet. So, but it pretty much just started with a really simple rectangle. Um, if I want to put like a dresser off here, um, okay, there's the edge. Maybe I'll just start with a rectangle here. So there's the beginning of a drawer or a cabinet of some sorts. Um, we can add some drawers. They're also going to follow the um, orthogonal lines. radiating out or radiating these lines are kind of radiating um, so I guess right here those are all the um, corners for drawing a, a interior um, space in one point perspective um, thank you so much for watching I hope this helps all right so now we'll work on um, two point linear perspective start with the outdoor scene. So there
there's our picture plane. There's our horizon. So now we're going to have two vanishing points. I'm going to put them outside the picture plane. Um, so if you have like, if you're drawing on a sheet of paper and you have like a board, then you would make the marks on the board. There's one vanishing point. There's another vanishing point. So we got one, two vanishing points. And um, so what one or two point perspective is good at is drawing corners. Um, so we'll get this building to the left. So you're not going to have as many horizontal lines, but you're going to have vertical lines because that's like where the corner rests. To, and they make a little vertical line. So there's our corner. And we're going to build everything from the center. Um, so there's one orthogonal. So we'll make this like a gigantic strip mall or something. So there we go. There's one side of our building. Um, these are the orthogonals. They converge off the sheet of paper or off your picture plane. Um, we're going to get this corner now. So I'm just going to let that run off the page. All right. So there is our um, building. Um, we'll expand it a little bit. I'll make it taller to show you how those angles change according as um, what your, your building gets from your eye level. So you can see the angle here. It's taller the angle is. Maybe this is almost kind of like a sign or something on top of whatever mall we're looking at. Um, all right. um, and then I guess um, yeah, I'll just pretend we're going to close off a bit of the building as well. We'll go below eye level. All right. And there's one side. There's the other. I'm going to pretend. Maybe this is a giant sandwich now. Um, so, so now to find um, this edge that kind of comes back to this vanishing point. So I'm going to make there's our horizon line. I'm going to come out here from the vanishing point and connect it to that edge to the left. I'm going to do the opposite here. I'm going to connect the dots and this is going to be a really weird angle. Got to trust the perspective. Pretty extreme. Oops. But that'll be that top plane for whatever object or roof or that's below our eye level. Um, so we'll bring our building back. to have any um, sort of details or grid or um, font on your building. You want to make sure that that also converges and um, its scale diminishes as it gets further away from the foreground and moves into the background. Um, so we'll start by 
we're going to do some text. Um, so we'll start with the rectangle. So we got two horizontal lines, or vertical, I'm sorry, two vertical lines. Make sure that they converge at the vanishing point. And now we're going to kind of like make little rectangles for each of the letters to fill into. I'm just going to write hello down. So there's one vertical, there's another. So you see how those vertical shapes get smaller and smaller. But um, I guess I'll. Um, I'll carve the letters out of each of those rectangles. And even, you know, I want to make sure that, like, So whatever's to the right is going to seem wider than whatever's to the left. I'll bring the camera up close. So I guess you see how each letter, letter kind of fit into a rectangle and then I just sort of carved out the unnecessary edges or unnecessary lines. All right. Hello. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll um, go outside y'all as well. So using two point perspective. So I'm following those orthogonals. I'm letting that sidewalk expand beyond the picture plane. So um, the tricky thing about sidewalks is that you can use, so I'm going to draw kind of the ground lines in the right side of this picture. I'm going to use the vanishing point to the left to determine where those ground lines fall. So I guess um, we'll see you as we do it. line will be more kind of to the horizontal side the further we get to the horizon line. So now I'm going to draw the ground lines to the left and I'm going to look at the vanishing point to the right. Let those, each of those lines radiate out from that uh, vanishing point. Get. So this angle here is pretty um, more of like a depth, like a diagonal line that I can see is further out to the horizon. That line that blends well to my left to right. Um, and I guess I'm yeah, we'll just draw a it's very similar to one point perspective, but we'll draw a grid pattern on the side of this building. So your vertical lines are still just going to be verticals. 
the gaps in between are going to get more and more narrow as we proceed. And then whatever horizontal line you draw is going to follow through this line here. And they're going to radiate out from your vanishing point. So I guess on the other some tips on drawing um, outdoor structures. Um, perhaps I'll, I'll draw a window real quick or a door real quick um, just for, for help. Um, so we'll start with vertical lines and I'll find an orthogonal. So it's also um, going to have those radiating lines so it looks like it's laying flat against your, um, the face of your building. In case you're below eye level, if there were any kind of like the doors inset, we're not going to see whatever plane there would be at the top, but we would see what's to the kind of the left side of the door. And if the bevel were deep enough, There's our door. Make it like there's a little hallway. Got this line, an orbe, vanishing point to the left. Whatever edge would be here, our vertical line, this is going to follow that vanishing point. A little kind of entryway. Okay. Um, we'll work with them in a couple. Um, and we'll move on to making an interior plan using two point perspective. So now we're on to our interior scene. We're going to use two point linear perspective and we're going to draw a corner. Let's see, there's a picture plane. I'm going to have an imaginary horizon line. We're inside, we don't see where the sky and the ground meet. We'll make one up or imagine it our vanishing point and put it off to the right. Oh, actually we have two vanishing points here. Put one over here. Um, so they're going to be outside the picture plane. So they're going to um, inform what goes on inside. We get our corner. So there's a corner. And we're going to use the vanishing point to the right to determine where the wall and the ceiling, the wall and the floor meet. So we're paying attention to those lines, all of our skis. So now we got to find where the wall and the ceiling, the wall and the floor meet to the right side. So we're going to use the vanishing point to the left to find that. line. So I guess um, yeah, we could start by putting, um, so we'll put a little um, window in there. Um, so whatever's on the right side of the wall, and then we're going to look at that vanishing point to the left to help us out. And we're going to have vertical 
beautiful lines. So you might need to adjust those so they meet um, your um, orthogonal. Um, so I guess this window here is above our eye level, so if we raise that, um, we're going to use this orthogonal to the left to help us find out where um, that inset moment's happening. Let's draw um, a vertical line. Be more narrow, further away, closer to where you flat your line is. Do the same for what we see below. But the corners are tricky, so while we were using this angle to determine these edges, we're going to use this vanishing point to determine the angle of the corners. There we go. There we go. So I hope that helps and the same thing will help out if you're you know, making a door um, or anything that's in center dimensional. Um, same rules apply if your window has kind of like a grid-like pattern, whatever's closer to you is always going to get a little shorter, smaller. So the area to the right is closer than It looks like a horizontal line, but it's just a very faint diagonal. Um, so there's a window there. And um, yeah, any other objects or any leaves or something that you might want to stand or something beneath the window. So we'll get the back plane of our nightstand. And get the front plane, so we're going to obey those diagonals. So there's the front. So for the shorter edge in the nightstand, we're going to follow this um, vanishing point. Okay. at that vanishing point is one of our shorter edges. We'll have our verticals once more. For the bottom, use this vanishing point to the left. This is really um, how you gain um, one point of linear perspective, two point of linear perspective. It really helps you see foreshortened shapes that we might not assume um, would be there. Um, so things we want to watch out for, this is for one point and two point linear perspective. Um, try not to make whatever is on the top of a rectangular object, a boxy object. Um, try not to make it wide. That usually you see how it looks a little tilted now, um, like an inkle or something. Um, the narrower um, your line, that would mean it's more accurate to um, linear perspective. Um, but yeah, I hope this video helps you, and um, thank you for watching.